go to Jacinta Price now, crossing to a very special rally that's happening in Sydney because we all know it's been a, a real uphill battle for the no campaign to take on the yes campaign because many in the media and big business sporting clubs, they don't want a bar of the no campaign. We already know, of course, the Prime Minister and the Albanese government is trying to set the no case up to fail. But Jacinta Price, Tony Abbott too, he's there with her. They're not afraid of a fight. She is on a national tour promoting why the voice is wrong in principle and practice. She was in Adelaide last week, massive crowds there. And as you know, when she hosted an event in Western Australia, she attracted 200-odd people up to the poultry 20 that turned up to hear former Liberal member Ken Wyatt. Joining me now, the Shadow Minister for Indigenous Affairs, Jacinta Nambajipa Price. Well, you've got a, a big rally, a lot of enthusiastic people. You've said to me you are absolutely determined to get around the country, barnstorm the country, talk to real people, explain to them why the voice is bad in principle, wrong in practice. Um, what's been the reaction mm. once you talk to people? Do they move their view? Well, look, I think, you know, I mean, Australians in general are common sense people. You know, they, they do want to know what the detail is. Yes, there's a lot of goodwill toward Indigenous Australians, but I don't think necessarily Australians are sold on the idea uh, that the voice itself is going to be... There, there is no guarantee that it is going to um, help our most marginalised Indigenous Australians. And it certainly hasn't been able to demonstrate that. And I think generally across the country, when I'm having conversations, a lot of people actually don't know what it's about. They think it's a television show uh, and the whole idea of a referendum uh, and they have to vote. They're going, oh, do, does that, you know, what does that involve? So, you know, it's important to get around, to have conversations. I was in Cabramatta today with Di Lee. You know, uh, Cabramatta is a world away from somewhere like Alice Springs, but you've got a community of migrants there that, you know, a lot of the migrants that I speak to personally say, well, you know, we, we struggled. Uh, we came to this country, we struggled. Uh, we, we fought to establish ourselves, to become Aussies, to become proud Aussies uh, and become part of this country, the fabric of this country. So why then, you know, they, they, they're like, well, what does this mean for us going forward in terms of equality of citizenship? There's all these answers. Um, that, well, there's questions that certainly people right across the country are interested in and, and need answered. The polls just tell me, Jacinta, that, that, you know, when you're first asking someone about the voice, there's a lot of support for it. Uh, we both know enormous goodwill for Aboriginal people in this country. But as you dig into some of the issues and they tease them out and, and, and you know, they understand it means a treaty as well and all the other things like truth-telling that are to come, they become quite angry. They, they feel like the government's not being honest with the detail. You know, why am I only hearing about this is one of the things that's often said, I'm told, in focus groups. Are you finding that? Absolutely. And the government isn't being honest with Australians. You can see even in their recent uh, ad campaign about this uh, referendum, they make no mention whatsoever of a voice to Parliament through the amendment of the Constitution. They're now focusing on um, the term recognition uh, because they know there's a lot of support for that, but they're being deceitful to Australians. Not only do they not uh, provide the detail on what this voice is supposed to be all about, uh, do they provide any um, you know, evidence to suggest it's going to improve the lives of Indigenous Australians, but they're being deceitful in the way that they are delivering their message through their ad campaign to everyday Australians. And I, and I think a lot of everyday Australians are, you know, insulted by this uh, because, as I said, they're not silly, but they do want some questions answered and they're not getting those answers. And I find it really funny, actually. So I'm in the middle of trying to convince Marion Scrimger, the member for Lingiari and the Albanese government to fund the Yipirinya school um, to take care of the mm -hmm. vulnerable kids on our streets uh, and the proposal, she's now putting questions around the school's proposal that has come from the elders. This is the elders of that school who are, who are pleading for support to help the children there behind. And now she's saying, well, I need to see more detail in this proposal. I just find it utterly preposterous and... and, and uh, just, just ironic that they are now seeking detail from a school who are saying, no, this is a solution, we know it's a solution, we work with these kids every day, we need to protect them uh, in an educational-focused environment. So, you know, this government 
it, it's all about games. It's all about politics. It, it's not about actually creating outcomes. Uh, and I think this is becoming more and more evident, especially with um, how this campaign is being run, what we're seeing now between now and the, and the referendum. Sporting codes, Jacinta, you had them in your sites today. There's been a lot of pushback actually from members. I listen to a lot of talkback radio. AFL members are not happy that their clubs are even involved mm. in this space. What's your thoughts? Look, I think sports, sporting codes need to stay absolutely out of politics. Um, they don't have the expertise. Uh, they don't have the understanding of what's going on on the ground. It's not for them to tell Australians how to suck eggs, uh, how to vote in a referendum. It's not for them, especially when they haven't sat down and listened to the voices of Indigenous Australians. You know, we took a delegation of them from remote communities whose first language is not English, who are deeply concerned about uh, what the voice might mean or not mean for them, who are against it. They haven't taken the time to sit down and listen to those voices. They're just listening uh, to the Albanese government. And, and I find it really actually paternalistic of them uh, to tell Australians how to think and how to vote going forward. And I'll be urging them and contacting many codes uh, between now and the referendum to have those conversations with them mm. about staying out of it and for the sake of their fans. Fans don't want politics rammed down their throat. I've got to let you go because I know you and Tony Abbott are on the stage just about now and you've got a big crowd that uh, want to hear from you. So I really appreciate you crossing into the show tonight. Good luck with the rally and we'll uh, watch your progress as uh, you get around the country. Jacinta Price, thank you. Thanks a oh, lot. Fantastic.